instrumental role in the pharmacopoeia of Ayush systems in India and he's, an, he's a very senior member of most of the expert committees of the Ministry of Ayush. Uh, Dr. S. P. Singh is former advisor, Homeopathy, Ministry of Ayush. Dr. S. P. Singh has also been former director of Central Council for Research in Homeopathy. And Dr. S. P. Singh has also been, has played instrumental role in the uh, development of regulations and pharmacopoeia in India. So I request the chair to please introduce the session. Good morning, friends. First of all, I thank Dr. Hatchlin and Dr. Manchanda for giving me this opportunity to chair the session on pharmacopoeia status in different countries. See, the pharmacopoeia is considered to be heart and soul of any system of medicine because the strength of the system depends upon the drugs and the drugs are contained, drug monographs are contained in the pharmacopoeia. Now, Pharmacopoeia, in brief, is a compendium which is officially recognized and it is this one contains the information about identity, purity and strength of a product. Now, having a monograph in the Pharmacopoeia doesn't mean that it is an approved drug. Having a monograph in the Pharmacopoeia means we are ensuring the quality of a product without any adulteration, without any substitution. And pharmacopoeia of each country in the modern system of medicine has its own format. And whenever any drug is to be launched or approval is to be sought from the authorities, it is very essential to meet certain pharmacopoeias. And if the pharmacopoeia doesn't exist in a particular country for a system, they can cite the pharmacopoeia of other country. So according to the WHO, there are many countries who do not have their own pharmacopoeia, particularly in the traditional systems of medicines. As Dr. Kim has pointed out, that WHO recognizes the modern system and traditional systems of medicines. Under the traditional systems of medicines, of course, homeopathy fits well into it. But if we demand from WHO to have a separate, each nomenclature for the systems of medicine, it becomes very difficult for international organization to accommodate such a, uh, such a kind of uh, uh, proposal. Therefore, under TCM, I would say homeopathy is rightly fitting into the mandate of the WHO. And WHO has already laid down broad guidelines for qualities and we have seen a number, about six publications on the traditional medicines right from raw material up to the finished products. Now, the latest one which has come for review uh, from the WHO side is the good processing practices. Um, good processing practices covers all aspects, right from the raw material up to the finished product. So this is a nutshell, a brief introduction to the pharmacopoeia. Now, those country, I find a diversity of the, uh, of the country here, therefore, it is not necessary to have right in the beginning a pharmacopoeia of its own. Maybe the, at the initial stages, pharmacopoeia of another country can be adopted or the monographs can be adopted from the other countries. This has been done, particularly in homeopathy. I've seen British pharmacopoeia being a member of the British Pharmacopoeia Commission. I get certain reviews which come from the European pharmacopoeia for incorporation into the British pharmacopoeia. So if you see the monograph in the British pharmacopoeia about homeopathy, you'd find a circle around the, right at the title of the monograph that indicates it has, it has been borrowed, adopted from the European pharmacopoeia. So this kind of arrangement from country to country can be made. For instance, India can play a vital role in the adjoining countries like Thailand, Malaysia, Bangladesh to support them for taking the monographs from Indian homeopathy pharmacopoeia. Now, here in India, we have, a, as I said in, in the introduction, we have a pluralistic system of medicine in India. And sometimes it is called the therapeutic garden. That is, there are so many kinds of different flowers. So we have the Ayurvedic, Yunani, Siddha, Swarepa, and then homeopathy. So the first four one are the traditional systems, and the fifth one is adopted system from, from Germany, of course and therefore a separate edge comes. 
But nevertheless, it is a very much part and parcel of the IU system. And I must say that the Central Council of Research in Homeopathy has played a very vital role in promoting not only the research in the homeopathy in India, but also in promoting the quality standards of the monographs. So Dr. Manchanda is really playing a very important role, even pushing through more monographs into the pharmacopoeia. But sometimes I become a stumbling block in his way because I insist upon any monograph which you prepare, you must have a reference standard. Now, there are certain drugs which are imported. Now, if there is no reference standard with the pharmacopoeial committee or commission, I don't think we have a right to have a monograph because any industry who gives the sample for analysis, it has to be compared with the monograph and monograph has to have a standard. Now, whether it is a chemical, because in homeopathy, we have a multiple situations. We have a pure compound. For instance, we have a picric acid, monograph on picric acid. We have a monograph iron, monograph on copper, monograph on cadmium, I mean, which is considered to be a toxic. So th these are monograph in the inorganic, metallic, all these monographs besides the plants. I think more than 50% are plant monographs. Others are inorganic material or the metallic materials or these, there are certain animals and insects. Insects means this Apis mellifica. Apis mellifica is a insect, bee, honey bee. That's as such is used in making the homeopathic formulations. So therefore, this is such a very complex uh, situation. And I want to streamline the homeopathic system monograph within the homeopathic pharmacopoeia in a very systematic manner. Have the monographs on the plant separate, monographs on the animal separate, monograph on the insect separate, monographs on the inorganic substances separate, so that there are separate chapter within the pharmacopoeia. And it becomes so systematic so that accordingly, you can invite the experts who can make excellent contributions in making the right type of monograph. Because when we work in the Ayurvedic pharmacopoeia, it is not necessary that all Ayurvedic people should meet. We have 28 dosage forms in Ayurvedic system of medicines. We need experts from all dosage forms. We do have experts in all specialties of Ayurveda. We have the plant chemists experts. We have the pharmacologist experts. We have the toxicologist experts. We have taxonomist experts, botanical experts, pharmacognosist experts, and phytochemist experts. So such kind of galaxy of people of, inter of national caliber, those who have credibility in the subjects, they are the members of these committees. So we have separate Ayurvedic Pharmacopoeia Committee, separate homeopathy, Siddha, and uh, uh, these systems have independent committees and then under the umbrella of the Pharmacopoeia Commission. So with this structure, we are trying to streamline and make ideal monographs into a, into a pharmacopoeia. And incidentally, we had already laboratories established, national level laboratories like homeopathy is a separate independent laboratory at a national level. That's a homeopathic pharmacopoeia laboratory. As we have the Indian systems of medicine laboratory, testing laboratory at a national level. Then of course this, at the state level, there are different drug state laboratories. And uh, we have advisor here from Ayurveda, Dr. Katoj. Uh, he has immensely contributed in streamlining many things in the drugs area, particularly the drug rules, regulations and rules. And same way in the homeopathic system of medicine, I think the regulation chapter, whenever a uh, regulatory new system, because Drug Act is being revised uh, in India, and Dr. Kotoch is playing a very vital role in, in revising, my suggestion would be to have an independent chapter of homeopathy in the, within, the, uh, within the Drugs Act so that there is a status of homeopathy in the country having a chapter in the Drugs Act, like we have a chapter for ASU drugs, same way 4A chapter is for ASU drugs, 4 chapter is for modern drugs, same way homeopathy should have one chapter in the drugs and cosmetics, so that these drugs are regulated properly. So with this brief introduction, I would like to, there are five speakers, I will not take much time, but very interesting to work in developing the monograph because it is a multidisciplinary approach to develop a monograph, to have standards. It's not only that one specialty person can prepare a monograph of a pharmacopoeia. Because having worked with the USP, I find for the last 20 years I am with the USP, uh, 
there is so much grinding which is done on a on a monograph that takes minimum of one year to reach to the final conclusion accepting the monograph into the pharmacopeia all sorts of debates first of all it is the safety whenever you induct any article into the pharmacopeia safety is a top consideration so total literature review is done and there is a evaluation safety evaluation at an admission committee of which i am the members in the usp so we critically examine thorough thoroughly examine the literature what are the toxic effects of the drug according to the of course modern system of medicine i would certainly say it may not be applicable to homeopathy because you are using many toxic materials in a very very diluted form so up to that extent but the review in the usp monograph in the usp there are monographs which we have introduced into the usp ayurvedic plants monographs but there is so much scrutiny before they accept the monograph we have the chinese plants which have been incorporated into the usp we have the ayurvedic plants which have been incorporated into the usp about 16 plants uh, and three monographs each I mean 48 monographs of the of the chinese and we have about 14 plants ayurvedic plants and 14 uh, um, multiplied by three or four some four monographs on one plant from three monographs so in that way we have tried to intrude into the usp but in an indirect way because these systems of medicines are not recognized in usp in us but as a dietary supplement they are there is a separate chapter in the usp of the dietary supplements that's how the plant drugs or ayurvedic drugs or the chinese drugs are being promoted through the dietary supplement pay so this is just a brief introduction so now i would like to invite we have five speakers uh, representing germany france usa brazil and india and um, uh, i would first invite germany friend my germany friend uh, dr werner noss uh, to make a presentation on the situation of pharmacopoeia in germany Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the kind introduction. And um, I hope the audience is not bored seeing me again. But uh, Robert von Aslen did a very, very clever job. Um, he asked me first to, to give the presentation yesterday. And then when I uh, agreed, uh, then he sent me a message. Oh, I saw that you are also the chairperson of the German Homeopathic uh, Pharmacopoeia Commission. And then you could also have a presentation on these pharmacopoeia. And I agreed. And, uh, Maybe you can see this uh, presentation as a complementary presentation to what I told you yesterday. Today I will a little bit focus on the issue of uh, the special homeopathic pharmacopoeia which we have in Germany. So we already learned that um, all this tradition is based, of course, on the invention of homeopathy by Samuel Hahnemann. And here is just a reprint of the organon of the book where he really wrote down in detail all the methods to create the homeopathic remedies. And this is just also the basis which we use for the German homeopathic pharmacopoeia. In Germany, it's called Homeopathisches Arzneibuch and has an abbreviation HAB, which I will use here then furthermore. It was started as the homeopathic Arzneibuch, the HAB, in 1978, where we had the first official edition. Then in 2000, there was a very comprehensive review, which was called HAB 2000. And then from that time on, we had the continuous updates and amendments, references also to provisions of the European Pharmacopoeia, so now it's continuously amended. You get uh, every year a package of leaves you can put in. Otherwise, uh, alternatively, of course, we have meanwhile electronic media so that um, the HAB is available. The basic strategy and the approach of the German pharmacopoeia, the homeopathic pharmacopoeia, is that really exact requirements for quality and manufacture are given. Therefore, we have a whole bundle of general notices and definitions. We have general methods and analytical methods. We have monographs on reagents, monograph on manufacturing methods 
with some general requirements, monographs on vehicles and excipients, and specific methods of production, and also specific monographs on raw materials and the preparation of muzzle tinctures. So usually if you are preparing a homeopathic medicinal product in line with the German tradition on homeopathy, everything you should find in the homeopathic pharmacopoeia and it should also be followed in this way. About raw materials, which kind of raw materials are allowed? Fresh plants, deep frozen plants, pressed juices, herbal drugs, but also materials of animal origin or part of them. We also we heard about the bees, but it may also be snakes or other animals. No salts are possible, as well as minerals, inorganic, and even synthetic chemicals. For vehicles and excipients, we have a defined list of vehicles which are to be used. So ethanol water mixtures, glycerol, water for injections, lactose, and some other vehicles. It's a defined list, and in the German tradition, you should exactly use this one. I have to state that in the European pharmacopoeia, there is a more liberal approach to these vehicles, and therefore it's possible in accordance with the European pharmacopoeia then also to make other applications based on the European pharmacopoeia. The only thing we insist on is uh, that you not should mix up both traditions. And we have, of course, the uh, usage of excipients uh, for the preparation of the dosage form. So if you are producing tablets or whatever, you can need different um, excipients for further preparation in the genetics of the homeopathic medicinal products. Overall, we have 58 methods for preparation of uh, homeopathic medicinal products according to different therapeutic schools, classic homeopathy, anthroposophy, spagyrics, and others. There are different preparations and dosage forms, muzzle tinctures, dilution, solutions, triturations, tablets, pillules, ointments, suppositories, eye and nasal drops, preparations for injections even. So there are some special German historical um, facts inside our pharmacopoeia. For example, in the European scheme, injections are not allowed within the registration scheme, so there are some differences. Overall, there are 610 monographs, or have been in 2012, 616 monographs in 2017, so you see there is not that much movement, but this is also depending on the interaction with the European pharmacopoeia, which I will show you in a few moments. This slide you already saw yesterday, because it's once again a um, paragraph from the German Medicinal Products Act, where we have a definition of homeopathy, and where you clearly find the link between the homeopathic manufacturing procedure, which may be described either in the European pharmacopoeia or in another valid pharmacopoeia of a member state. And the German HAB is, of course, amongst these valid pharmacopoeias of a member state. As we yesterday could not hear the presentation by the European pharmacopoeia, I will try shortly to give you an idea of the network and cooperation within the European Union, just explaining the link between the German pharmacopoeia and the European pharmacopoeia. You see, in accordance with Article 55 of the German drug law, there is a pharmacopoeia in Germany, and the idea that the pharmacopoeia is built up of a system of the DAB, this is the general German pharmacopoeia, the HAB, the homeopathic pharmacopoeia, and the European pharmacopoeia, and these pharmacopoeias are binding for the manufacturers in Germany. They have to follow the rules and requirements laid down in these pharmacopoeias. At the EDCOM in the European pharmacopoeia, we have one working party, um, which is here abbreviated HOM. This is um, more on monographs, um, on raw materials and analytical methods and one working party on manufacturing methods, HMM. 
And the same is reflected more or less within the HAB Commission, where we also have some expert groups, a committee on analytical methods, a committee on manufacturing methods, and also it's a pleasure for me that Christian Mohl and Harald Ort, who are in these expert committees, are also here among the participants. So the way it is working is that, for example, if we have a specific monograph or a manufacturing method in the HAB, then it may be suggested that this monograph or the manufacturing method is adopted to the European Pharmacopoeia, then it's forwarded to Strasbourg and the expert groups in Strasbourg are working on this, and finally a European monograph could be adopted by the European Pharmacopoeia Commission. The same may be also for other monographs like the Pharmacopoeia Francaise, where we also had some manufacturing methods which have been transferred in the past to the European Pharmacopoeia. We just heard about the British Pharmacopoeia where, of course, the European Pharmacopoeia monographs may be integrated, but then uh, they have a special signature to identify them as European Pharmacopoeia methods. In Germany, it's a little bit different. If a method from the HAB is transferred to the European Pharmacopoeia, then it will be deleted in the HAB because it's in the European Pharmacopoeia and has the same value. So the basic idea is that we want to foster harmonization in the European Union and as far as possible integrate the monographs into the European Pharmacopoeia. This is the way for this transfer in all these groups where Germany is also um, giving input and uh, giving especially resources to this process of interaction between the national pharmacopoeias and the European pharmacopoeia. And here's just a list um, of monographs which are a part of the European pharmacopoeia, which are clearly related especially to homeopathy. There are general monographs on homeopathic preparations, on herbal drugs for homeopathic preparations, and mother tinctures for homeopathic preparations, which are now in the European Pharmacopoeia. So this is a basic set of requirements. We have a monograph on specific manufacturing methods, um, which is named and titled Methods of Preparation of Homeopathic Stocks and Potentization. It sounds uh, quite easy like one monograph, but if you look into this monograph, it's a listing and of very detailed descriptions of different manufacturing methods, so it's uh, continuously um, broadened, and this is really the core of manufacturing methods for the European Union, and so just, we have to state a mixture of methods, a part of them originating from French tradition and other ones from the German tradition, so that in the European Pharmacopoeia we have really a kind of harmonized unification of this kind of monographs and applicants can choose on which monographs they would like to base their applications. There are monographs for specific dosage forms, for example, pillules for homeopathic preparations, homeopathic pillules impregnated, and also coated pillules. And special monographs, 31, uh, which are delivered here, um, with special focus on, on German contributions, but uh, just an example, Belladonna for homeopathic preparations, Apis for homeopathic preparations, or Sulfur for homeopathic preparations. And this is just giving you this insight and just a short glance on how this system is working together. The basic for an application and the quality requirements is laid down in the monograph, the manufacturing methods are defining how this can be achieved. Of course, if you then go into an application, some more details them have to be taken into account, but basically we try to integrate then all these national pharmacopoeia um, manufacturing methods and monographs into the European pharmacopoeia. And as we couldn't hear yesterday, this European pharmacopoeia um, presentation, I think, although I focused first on the, the HAB, the German homeopathic pharmacopoeia awareness, should be that this is clearly now linked and in interacting and in collaboration with the European pharmacopoeia. 
Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. North. Very systematic presentation. Uh, wonderful overview has been given about the structure of a monograph because this is very important to adopt a structure which fits into all the essentialities of a monograph of a particular product. So far as plants are concerned, uh, there are certain plants which are highly poisonous. And those monographs need a special mention because in India they follow a schedule H, if I am not wrong, Dr. Toch, yeah. schedule H. That contains all the poisonous material, list of poisonous material. One has to be extra cautious. For example, Strychnos nux vomica. Now, Strychnos nux vomica in ASU system, Ayurvedic system of medicine, there is a process, process of shodhana. And that shodhana eliminates or changes the structure of the, of the strychnine. Strychnine and brucine are the two components. And when shodhana is done, the strychnine structure gets changed and also the brucine also modified during the process of shodhana and the toxicity is eliminated. So that kind of uh, uh, precaution has to be there that any plant which needs a special treatment, they should be listed in a separate schedule in the Drugs and, Drugs and Cosmetic Act. And that kind of provision is very, very necessary. Of course, German is very advanced so far as homeopathy is concerned. They are the fa father of the uh, homeopathy. So we have to take mo most of the leads from the German pharmacopoeia. Nevertheless, the concerned country can have the freedom to have their own structure, but the essential components of identity is very important. See, identity is sometimes the mistakes are done in selecting the right type, the plant material, species in the varieties. You could find a lot of differences in the, within the species. Therefore, accurate identification of the plant material or zoological material it has to be there. Uh, with these words, I invite the next speaker, uh, Dr. Dr. Anne Lee from France. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just small correction. Uh, the list of uh, poisonous uh, substances which is given in the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, that is Schedule E1. Schedule E1, not H. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Toch. Thank you, Chair. Um, today I'm, I'm talking um, about French homeopathic pharmacopoeia, but on behalf of uh, my, my colleagues from the Division of Control that are in charge of pharmacopoeia, as, not, as I'm, not a, a, I'm not in charge of pharmacopoeia now, and this is Muriel Durand and Frédéric Barbouza. So I will uh, introduce you to the French pharmacopoeia by an history, current status, and some solutions concerning the challenge, opportunities, and future outlook, how they mentioned. Uh, the, the French pharmacopoeia has been published for the first time, or the French pharmacopoeia uh, started in Latin in 1818, 18, um, and has been translated in French in 1819. Uh, in 1965, the first edition were, uh, included two general monographs for homeopathic preparation. As you know, the French pharmacopoeia uh, is not separate from the other um, monographs. The, it's not a homeopathic uh, separate pharmacopoeia. Uh, those general monograph in uh, 1965 uh, were homeopathic preparation and homeopathic macerate. In 1983, the 10th edition was supplement, were supplemented with homo, uh, monograph on homeopathic stocks. Then in 2012, the 11th edition of the French Pharmacopoeia came in force and uh, w w was free, available online, and is still available online. So you can check now uh, the French Pharmacopoeia on the website of the ANSM. The current status is the, um, prepared by the French agency. Uh, it is also defined in the French law as pharmacopoeia. Uh, the French law defines the pharmacopoeia with, uh, as composed with the French pharmacopoeia and the European pharmacopoeia. So each, each time the term pharmacopoeia is mentioned in the law, that means that all the monographs of the European and the French pharmacopoeia 
pharmacopoeia are mandatory. And when the monograph exists, they are mandatory. The elaboration or the revision of the French pharmacopoeia is made by uh, expert committees and uh, for homeopathic there is uh, one expert committee dedicated. Then the process is classical, uh, elaboration or revision by the expert committee, goes to a public inquiry when everybody can make their comments. Uh, 